What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Jake and this is your body comp prescription. So the same day that this video is going live Friday, August 13th, I'm headed to San Diego. So hopefully nothing bad happens. I just realized I'm going on a vacation on Friday the 13th. I'm not really that superstitious. Isn't a whole bunch of bad stuff supposed to happen on Friday the 13th? I don't know, let me know down in the comments. Anyways, the same day that this is going up, I am headed to San Diego with Kelsey, Jesus, and Karina. And I thought it would be a cool idea to walk you guys through my training and my diet approach before going on a vacation. So essentially before everyone goes on a vacation, almost everyone is looking to lose a couple of pounds because it'll help them lean out or tone if you like that word better. And there's a couple of steps that we have to consider if we wanna get that done. First off, if we're trying to lose weight, we need to be in a calorie deficit, but I'm pretty sure you guys already know that by now. And if you don't know how to find your calorie deficit, go check out the video that I made on how to calculate your macros, because that's absolutely important if you want your diet to go successfully before you go on vacation. And the main factor that's gonna determine how much weight you lose is how much time you have before your vacation. Now this San Diego trip was planned about a month in advance, which isn't a ton of time, but it is enough time in order to see some significant change in weight. And if you're managing your calorie deficit, you can probably lose anywhere between four and eight pounds within that month because most people generally lose between one and two pounds per week. And the more calories that you take away from your daily calorie intake is going to determine how much weight you can lose. If you're a little bit more aggressive with your calories, you'll lose weight a little bit more quickly. And if you're a little bit more conservative with your calories, you'll lose weight just a little bit more slowly. But if you know you have a trip coming way in advance, you don't have to be as aggressive with your calorie deficit because you have a lot more time to lose that weight. And since this trip was only planned about a month in advance, I would probably choose to do something a little bit more aggressive with my calories and decrease them by about 500 to 750 calories per day. And the main place that I'm gonna remove most of those calories from are gonna be my carbs. And that's because carbs are the least satiating out of all of the macronutrients. And as always, when you're dieting, you wanna keep your protein intake high because that's crucial in trying to either maintain the muscle that you already have or trying to build new muscle while you're actually in your deficit. And the main reason that I like keeping my fats relatively normal is because fats are responsible for maintaining normal hormone balance. And I personally think that keeping my hormones as close to normal as possible is super valuable. Now, when it comes to training, I generally keep everything the same. Whatever it is that you did to gain the muscle that you already have, you don't necessarily want to switch your programming from what got you your muscle. If you're a bodybuilder, a power lifter, a crossfitter, if you like boot camp workouts, whatever it is that you do, try and keep that all the same. Because the more variables that you change at one time make it a lot harder for you to identify if something went wrong, if there's something that you want to change moving forward. However many sets, however many reps you were doing, keep that consistent. You don't necessarily need to switch to lower weight and higher reps just because you're dieting. Your main goal should be to keep your training the same as if nothing has changed. Move some heavy weight, try and hit some new PRs, and continue to push yourself and follow your programming as regularly scheduled. I would recommend keeping your resistance training to three to five days per week. You all know that this is my sweet spot, but I find that it's the sweet spot for most everyone else as well. Do not neglect your recovery. A lot of times people increase their training frequency when prepping for a vacation, but they're unintentionally doing more harm to their body than good because they aren't allowing their body enough time that it needs in order to recover. And now it's time to talk about cardio. What should you do? How long should you do it? How frequently should you do it? And what the best form is? My general rule of thumb is to keep your cardio limited to the amount of days that you're resistance training. So if you're resistance training, five times per week, you should be doing cardio five times a week or less. Now, what form of cardio is best? The best form of cardio is gonna be the one that you can tolerate the most of. Just because you burn the most amount of calories on a Stairmaster doesn't mean that it's gonna be the best for you. Because you might actually be sabotaging your lower body strength when it comes to leg day because your legs are too exhausted from all the Stairmaster that you did. And as for how long you should be doing your cardio for, I would recommend staying between 30 and 45 minutes per session. Any more than that, you may be sabotaging your recovery. Any less than that, you won't be making a super significant difference when it comes to burning calories. I personally like walking on a treadmill. I usually try and maintain a three mile per hour speed at about a five to 10 incline, but that's just what works for me. I find it relatively easy and effective. And I generally keep the amount of cardio the same throughout the entirety of my prep. Occasionally, I'll increase my cardio intensity to push myself, but like I said, my cardio stays relatively consistent so I can limit the amount of variables affecting my training. Remember that cardio is a tool that you can use to achieve a greater calorie deficit, but it isn't absolutely necessary if you're already managing your calorie deficit through your nutrition. But if you wanna give yourself a better chance at decreasing your body weight before your vacation rolls around, burning a couple hundred calories more per week via cardio can definitely help. And the last thing that I wanna mention about prepping for your vacation is to listen to your body. If you're tired, rest. 
If you're sore, take a day off. A lot of people overtrain and overexhaust themselves because they want to look their best, but almost no one considers that the results of your efforts will not show unless you're taking care of your recovery. And when you're actually on vacation, just remember to hydrate. And if you're trying to maintain your physique throughout your vacation, just remember to make good decisions about what you eat. And if you really want to go that extra mile, you can always be protein conscious. That'll always help. And just remember to enjoy yourself. There's no point in busting your ass in the gym and restricting your diet if you can't enjoy any of the luxuries that come with taking a vacation. I hope these tips help save this video for later whenever the next time you take a vacation is or share this with a friend who you know has a trip coming up. I just want to thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.